Mm. And I love the world of acting. So you can do that. Yeah. You can do this kind of like incredibly sort of deep, passionate thing. And then you're in Love Again with Celine Dion. Yes, of course. <laughs> but that's deep and passionate. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that was, we, I shot that movie in lockdown. Never met Celine. Obviously, oh, nobody. No, I know. Still haven't met her. But I know she's uh, pre ordered um, Talk Up from Water. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> The Graham Norton Radio Show on Virgin Radio. Interviews is the new book. Russell Toby and Robert Diamond are here now. Hello, boys. Hello. Hello. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, hi. Uh, so this is this is kind of the meat of the podcast. You've lifted the interviews, and uh, how much? Uh, I mean, because how many you've done? It's five years of podcast, so it's a lot of interviews. We've done over three hundred interviews. We're just about to hit six million downloads. We started in twenty eighteen. Thank you very much. Well, for an art podcast, it's pretty for any unheard podcast. Of. Yeah, true, 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 true. <laughs> so this is twenty four of our favourite, most compelling, most kind of humorous, profound interviews that we've had out of the three hundred, which was quite hard to whittle down, right, Rob? I, I was going to say. So did you fight, Rob? Did you, where, where there was no, I want because I asked that really interesting question in that one. So. <laughs> I look good in this one. Yeah. We um we we had to really think about getting different voices heard, and I think we've we've got a selection of very well known people like Elton John, Tracy Emin, kind of like superstars who kind of act as a conduit for people to like pick up the book maybe. And then we've also got a whole emerging kind of scene of artists that people might never have heard of, and for some of them it's the first time they've ever been published in a book. So we, we've got over 110 images, full colour, and it's a softback, so it feels really approachable as well. Yeah, I must say the images are gorgeous, and the Thank the. You. The, the the art you managed to get into the book is is really lovely. Um, the is it easier or I don't know where where do you stand on? Is it more interesting for you to interview an artist? Or is it more interesting to talk to a collector? Because, you know, that's the kind of the world you inhabit. I think for us, there's no hierarchy on the show. It's just about art is for everyone. It's about connecting as many people as possible to art. So th- we would talk to a superstar, but hoping, you know, if you talk to Pierce Brosnan, people are come for James Bond and then they'll stick around for Oliver Hemsley, who's an emerging artist. We want people to come from all different directions to discover art and know that it's for them. And the more varied guests you have, the more opportunity you have to connect on that level. Yeah, and also I think art is about storytelling and about about documenting kind of humanity and where we are in the world right now. And often if you want to find out about politics or social kind of change, the place to go is actually art. Yeah. And um, we really want to encourage people to understand that they can get in free to museums around the country. Like art is open for them and the artists want to share their story. And also you can sort of learn about yourself through looking at art and sort of work out your own traumas, maybe loves, passions, all kinds of things. Like it's all a range of emotions. We started because, you know, All we hear on art is this very kind of heavy, earnest, kind of quite hushed way of talking about art. And we love it. It's so much fun. And everybody that's come along with us suddenly goes to museums and they have fun and it's entertainment. And you've just got to see that, that these are stories that artists are telling that they want you to connect to. And it is for you. And for so long we felt shut out, imposter syndrome. I mean, me and Rob, I used to go into galleries, walk in and sort of apologise for being there, go around as quick as possible and leave and just sort of go, (laughs) bye, sorry about that, sorry I'm here. And that's like, that's what so many people do because there's this fortress built around art that makes you feel like it's not for you, but the artists themselves want you there. And you've just got to realise that. I think for me, one of the most surprising episodes we did was Sharon Stone, Mm. the basic instinct actor. And um, she actually (laughs) makes her own... Well done. uh, Oh, yeah, she still sorry. can't shake it. Oh my God. <laughs> no, but it's such an iconic yeah. film. I actually watched it the other week and I still think it stands up as like, she's incredible in it mm. and really nuanced actually and quite, really scary. Um, but I, I love her and she actually makes art herself and she was incredibly like political and really outspoken and passionate. And the weirdest thing was Sharon Stone loves Margate, Kent. Like she's been like five been, times or like something and she wants to come this summer to like see us. It's the most surreal thing. And we never even met her really. Well, Russ had met her once, but it's really funny, like things like that. That's huh? the things you're saying about what's surprising. Yes. I mean, like we got we got Pierce Brosnan in there. And what's surprising is that James Bond makes art yeah. and he's made painting and throughout his whole career he started as an artist and he's had an artist studio alongside his acting studio. So he'd be doing a James Bond stunt and then while they're setting up for the next scene, he'd be next door painting. And that's been his whole journey. And he came to art because he had some trauma in his life and he found paint and he found colour. And that's what he discovered. But so many people didn't know that about him. And he's in the book and on a podcast. And them yeah. moments of uh, discovery are so exciting because for us, we feel like we're this conduit to discovery. And every single guest is profound. We feel like we've done them all, but you haven't. Yeah. And, and here's the thing. So obviously, I think, you know, when, when in this 
started, it was your passion project. It was the thing yeah, you loved to do. It was for us. But now it's this huge <laughs> thing. It's, you know, six million downloads, two books, you create exhibitions. So is there a kind of a level of production now where our are people coming to you and kind of go, well, you could have this person, this person, this they, person? They do, but we still do it all ourselves. And actually, we call each other daily and text each other every five minutes about what we could be Russell, doing. Russell's rolling his eyes, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, he no, does. Not yeah. it's My every like, day. <laughs> we have someone called Emma now who helps us to edit the actual show itself because yeah. that was becoming really overwhelming. But generally, we want it to stay what it is, which is our, yeah. our friendship, really. Yeah. And um, and it's been amazing. Like Even uh, this week, we went to Tracy M in studio and did an Instagram Live on our at talk art on Instagram. Instagram. And she spoke to us for like half an hour all about her new paintings and, and getting to meet people like Tracy, who've become really great friends of ours. Um, her generosity is just knows no bounds. She's so generous and so um, inspiring. That's how we met. She introduced yeah. us. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to see the boys in an action, you are doing it live on Friday? Yes, we're actually going to be at the Dulwich Picture Gallery um, in London. And um, we're meeting Emma Dabry, the amazing writer. She wrote Don't Touch My Hair and uh, What White People Can Do Next. Amazing, amazing books. And she's originally from Ireland as well. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, and she lives in Margate and she's, she's, she's one of my favourite writers. Yeah. So we're really excited that she's um, agreed to meet I mean, us. if anyone's doing a drinking game uh, with the word Margate as a trigger, <laughs> <laughs> they're very drunk right now. They would be very, very, yeah. very yeah. drunk. Yeah. They, they, they can't drive a car. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, does she live in Margate? Yeah, yeah, she recently oh. moved. There's oh, so many people moving. We love um, Margate. Yeah. No, you live down there too, right? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. How long have you been down there? Well, we've got a place down there for two years. We've had been oh, renovating yeah. it and now it's ready yeah fabulous yeah wow. i think this summer down. is going to yeah, be yeah. the summer, summer and your gallery is down there yeah carl friedman gallery and also our print business counter editions so we actually make prints now on site and uh, our neighbor is tracy emin so um i live at the end of the road and we're all like sort of family now and she group. cooks me dinner yeah. regularly and we've all become you look like, after our cats yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly. got anything you want us to sell tracy <laughs> <laughs> we love her um and now but you haven't given up acting no way no way no no, no. Uh, so uh, let's talk about some things people can see you in. There's a live version of Derek Jarman's Blue, or yes. Blue Now. Yes. Uh, so these are kind of immersive performances? It's more like a, a happening, a gig. So the last film that Derek Jarman made was Blue in 93 when he was going blind from AIDS, and he died in 94, sadly. And it's a static blue screen with a voiceover, and it's all excerpts from his diary, and like Tilda Swinton was on it, and it's it was his life and basically summing up the rhetoric of the time and i love the world of acting so you can do that yeah you can do this kind of like incredibly sort of deep passionate thing and then you're in love again with celine dion yes of course <laughs> but that's deep and passionate <laughs> yeah no that, that was we I shot that movie in lockdown never met celine obviously oh, nobody no oh. i know still haven't met her but i know she's uh pre-ordered um talk up from water <laughs> but uh she, <laughs> feel, she's moving to margate she is moving. <laughs> she's coming with sharon stone and uh she said no she was in las vegas doing her stuff there and we shot the film and now it's out and it's um, lovely Priyanka Chopra and Sam Hewen and it's a rom-com and it's very fun I think it looks really brilliant I'm actually going to go and see it tonight and I, I think rom-coms I mean you've got to love them and also someone who actually does have the book right now is Madonna and she followed us a few weeks yeah. ago Russ met her in LA and she actually she's the only person right now with our book aside from Tracy Emin they're the two people who have it Oh, what do you so, mean? Madonna, wait, oh, Russell, this book? Yeah, yeah, we said yeah. I have. Our new talk book. Yeah. This book yeah. that I have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you one. You're the third <laughs> person. Madonna and Tracy Emin. It's the Holy Trinity. It's the Holy Trinity. Um, Madonna, Graham yeah. and Tracy. 